Well, thank you for joining us at intermission. We've just heard this magnificent performance of a truly remarkable piece, Renewal, by Viet Quang, yeah. <laughs> who is here with us. And Viet has been here since Wednesday. The concert of his works by the New Music Ensemble. Uh, did a class for composers, two rehearsals with the Wind Ensemble. So it's been a really great residency. So can't thank you enough for being with us. And we have to say before we go too much further about the Epoch Percussion Quartet, who just slay this thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. at any rate, it's great to have you with us. Well, thanks for having me. It's been an awesome week. Yeah, <laughs> It's been lots of fun. We actually did Renewal in Dallas with the Dallas Winds and the same quartet, the Epoch Percussion Quartet, and then came right to Austin. So we've, we've been able to spend a lot of time together in the last week, and it's been wonderful. But And you... Obviously, you made some remarks before the performance, so the audience knows a bit about the piece. But I guess the question is, what led to this piece? And there are there are these different versions of it. So could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So like really, almost two years ago, um, Albany Symphony they have a new music ensemble that's kind of like a chamber orchestra instrumentation. Mm -hmm. So like single strings, some winds, and piano. And so they had been in touch with GE about um, a commission, and specifically GE Renewable Energy, mm -hmm. and so they wanted a piece that was about renewable energy and having a movement about hydropower, wind power, and solar power. So they specified that? Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Um, and they didn't tell me like what order it had to be in or anything, but apparently it just happened to be that that's the order that, like, of the development of renewable energy. I see. Um, so that was, a, like... <laughs> Nice accident, I guess. Right. But uh, so I wrote that piece in the chamber orchestra version, and then later we made a full orchestra version that the Albany Symphony commissioned as well. Um, and then this is the Wind Ensemble version, the final right. one. <laughs> right. For now. <laughs> so how much? You know, we we had uh, we did this live stream rehearsal on Friday, and there were some questions that people mm -hmm. wrote in and asked about mm -hmm. the percussion writing. Mm -hmm. And so this this piece was written for Sandbox. Mm -hmm. And they did the first performances of it. And I suppose the the only other performances of the Nepox performances. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So did you workshop the percussion writing with them? Or mm -hmm. how did that all happen? Yeah, so basically after it all was like decided what we were going to do, we, mm -hmm. I went to um, Sandbox Percussion Studio in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And we kind of just had this task at hand to figure out what instruments to use. Let them hit some things. And... Yeah, and it was nice to have, it was actually really nice to have these specific ideas in mind for what each movement should be about. Right. Because I think if if I were asked just to write a percussion concerto without any sort of requests, it would be like daunting to figure out what exactly, where to start. Where, because, yes, where to begin. Yeah, or... anything can be a percussion instrument. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I always knew that I wanted to use the crystal glasses for the water movement. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of figured out. <laughs> And, but we did try out some other water percussion stuff. Um, I would used the water in, with Gertali in right. another piece. Um, but for the wind movement, um, I, I bought some of those air canisters. So I was like, yes. it'd be cool to use those. And then they, we tried just some of the stuff with it right. to see what it sound like. And then, really, uh, I just wanted to do this like drum set beat. And then right. figuring out how to make that related to the wind stuff was um, fun. It just was like, it's just like a... Right. Revelation I had at like three in the morning one day. It was like <laughs> they could spin, right? Like a wind turbine, right? And um, and for the solar movement, I knew I wanted to use like um, metallic percussion, but it was kind of a, a we had to figure out how to like set it all up so that it right. could be one sort of unit, right? Um, because the whole piece I always want to treat them as if they're one soloist, right? Uh, instead of having like four separate. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and the just the the way those instruments are arrayed, and your goal was to have it look like a solar panel, yeah, which yeah, it does. Too, it yeah. does <laughs> look like that. And so, what as far as the the movement uh, there that you chore you don't choreograph it, but you just explicitly tell them what you want yeah, them yeah. to do. Uh, to go, what what was the reaction when you first broached that? So were they just all in from yeah, the beginning? Yeah, I think I sent the music in and I didn't hear anything about it. So I was like, this is either really good or really either, bad. Yeah, right. It's either good or... Yeah. And mm. like a couple weeks, maybe even just like a week and a half before the first performance, I went to the studio again and they mm -hmm. just played through everything for me and they just did it. Right. And of course you have to memorize that right. stuff and know when to stop. And it's actually like... 
uh, you have to time it right so that by the time you get back to your kick drum, that right, um, you're at the right one. <laughs> right. I know the guys here. You know the Epoch guys sort of experimented with that mm -hmm. about how they mentioned this in the the live stream the other day. They they tried it just where it didn't matter where they ended up, and then mm -hmm. they would switch back. Mm -hmm. And anyway, after a while, they decided it is best to have a definite stopping yeah. point, a yeah, definite yeah. plan, mm -hmm. you know, to get to it. But it's a very effective moment in the piece. Oh, know? thanks, yeah. Because it's you're making this musical a cello rondo anyway without there being in a cello rondo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so that's the effect of it. Mm -hmm. So it really, it's a pretty gripping moment, I think, the, both times that it happens. Oh, so. thanks, yeah. That's some of my favorite uh, stuff in the pieces, right. those moments. And you are a percussionist Yes. before being forced into retirement Yeah. <laughs> back in your high school <laughs> I, days. I'd say it was like a voluntary retirement. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. You were in a very famous high school band, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. playing Alfred Watkins' Lasseter High mm -hmm. School Band. Yeah. And then became a clarinetist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, <laughs> kind of done it all, I guess. <laughs> right, yeah. So, uh, and now... Uh, this piece, of course, has received great acclaim and a number of performances, and and, and I'm sure there are going to be obviously many more. But you are continue to work on other projects. You've written music for virtually every medium in a way. Uh, you've written orchestral works, obviously a lot of a lot of chamber music because that was played so beautifully the other night. Mm -hmm. uh, extra fancy, you yeah, know, yeah. for double reads. Yeah. And, um, so I suppose have you written any choral music yet? Um, not very much. Yeah. I have this piece that's for like chamber winds and choir. Hmm. That actually the Navy band just did it. Um, okay. But yeah, that's about it. Yeah. I have. I also have a piece for counter tenor, two tenors, uh, two bear drums and a bass. Right. So like all male singers. Um, mm -hmm. That was kind of a piece I wrote when a group called Galicantus came. Sure. To Princeton and right. Uh, we wrote pieces for them, but I would love to write a choir piece. Um, I just um. Don't know very very many choir. Right. Directors. The reason I I ask is because it seems like your music has, you know, people remember the the, the spectacular technical moments, but it has a very lyrical singing quality to mm -hmm. it, which I think comes through beautifully, in both the first and the third movements, mm -hmm. you know, uh, of this piece. But I have to tell you again, what a, I just think the piece is really extraordinary oh, and it's you. been great to have you here with us this it's, week, been, so. it's been amazing to work with you just well, yeah incredible. won't be the last time <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it won't be. <laughs> i hope okay well thanks so much uh, thank you you bet